Hi there, it's Chris Hamilton here with EnterMyInvoice.com, BookkeepingAutomation.com, and SalesTipAday.com. Uh, today we're going into the second step, which is recording your lead generation process. This comes from the 12 ways to multiply your marketing. So basically how to take one piece of content and push it out across multiple platforms so that you maximize your uh, ability to be... Um, to be found online. So if you hang out to the very end here, if you're a bookkeeper or an accountant, I got a special offer for you. If you are outside of the bookkeeping and accounting world, uh, I have a special offer for you that also bookkeepers and accountants can jump on as well. So here's what you're going to learn in this. You're going to learn five ways to record your presentation. You're going to learn how to edit your presentation recording, and you're going to learn little known tips and tricks to make this process a way easier for you. Uh, so what you're going to learn is I made mistakes over the years. I have over uh, probably about 1,600 videos on my YouTube channels between the two of them uh, my Vimeo channel I probably have another 600 or so um, I want you to learn from my mistakes and how to do this quicker so that's where you're gonna get some little known tips and tricks on this one so the first thing you could do is is if you build built your presentation in PowerPoint um, one of the things you can do is if you go over to the uh, slideshow area once you're in the menu there go down you can record your presentation um, uh, with the slideshow. So what it does is it pops up here and what you do is uh, you can see your first slide that you're on and the smaller slide is the next one coming up. And then what you do is when you hit record, it'll start recording and you can just record here and then down at the bottom there where it says current slide and total time and stuff like that. Um, you know, you, you can see the duration that you got here. And then you just basically go up and exit the show. This is how you record off of PowerPoint. Another way that you can record as PowerPoint is um, you can pull a presentation up and you can save it as a movie. And then what happens is this will allow you to um, create how long you want a slide to show. And then it will, uh, it records this and puts it out. The only downfall to this is I believe you cannot record your voice over it. Um, this is just strictly for recording your presentation with no information behind it. Um, so that's the only downfall with that. So that's a PowerPoint. On the keynote side of things, uh, what you do is you hit um, in the menu, you go to play and then hit record slideshow. And it's very similar to the PowerPoint. It brings up uh, the different slides. And then down below where you see that little red arrow, there's a record button. You hit record. And then basically you can just start recording your presentation. Then when it's done, you click the stop button and it will um, it'll stop your recording and then it'll save it as a movie file. There's another way you could do this too. So it's very similar to what you see in PowerPoint is uh, when you go into the file, you can export a presentation to QuickTime. What this does is it gives you a few options. So there's that self-playing mechanism that allows you to go through and... Um, uh, put uh, slides up for a certain time frame and then also you know kind of what the duration is and the format and everything so once again with this there is no way to record the uh, presentation itself um, with vocals on it it just records the presentation uh, without it so now those are kind of two of the ways that are easy to do it another way that you can do it is you can actually get screen recording software part of what we've got um, if you kind of go left to right, Camtasia is one that's, I, I believe, strictly designed for Windows. I don't know if it plays in a Mac. Um, QuickTime uh, will work with both Windows and a Mac, and then Snagit will work with a Mac. There's other uh, screen capture um, software packages out there. So what you can do is if you go on Google, you just um, uh, Google screen capture software, and you'll find different packages on this one. So I'm going to show you uh, how to record with QuickTime. QuickTime is relatively easy. So when you open up QuickTime, because it'll work for both a Mac and a um, PC, um, is you go into the file. And when you go into file, then what you'll see is new screen recording. When you click on new screen recording, it's going to bring up a little black box like you see in the upper part here. And there's a little down arrow. You can't see it. So I've got the red arrow pointing at the down arrow. When you go in there, if you have a external microphone that you're plugged in through USB, it will um, pick that up and put it in there. I highly recommend if you're going to be doing videos on a regular basis, go invest in a high quality microphone, like something like a Yeti, um, um, a blue Yeti or a blue snowball microphone. Uh, I've got both. Uh, right now I'm using a blue Yeti and it works really well. Uh, sound quality is very important in this sort of stuff. Uh, the other option you have is to um, uh, 
show mouse clicks on uh, in the recording when you're clicking away. And then once you've done that, you hit the record button. So you see the little record button here. What you do is you click that and then what it'll say is, if you want to, um, you're going to need to drag this over the portion of the screen that you want to record. So what happens is you hold your mouse down, left hand click, and scroll over that section, and it will start recording that section of your presentation. So that's how you do it with QuickTime. The other, there's a couple other ways you can do this. If you have webinar software uh, that you're using, like GoToMeeting, uh, JoinMe, uh, Zoom.us they have the ability to record um, your presentation as well. So what you do is, um, you know, I'm going to show you just in Join Me. Unfortunately, I've got a free version of Join Me, so I don't have the ability to record, but our company uses Join Me, and we record this all the time with the screen capture for people. Um, but literally, you just go into the little box here, or the little circle here, click on it, and it's got record. When you click on that, it'll say screen recordings on. You have the ability to download the video, or you've got a link to the video that one and that's great because then all of a sudden you've created a, uh, a recording of that presentation zoom is another one i'm not using it for presentations right now but i am using it for uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings with people and when you schedule a meeting over here you scroll down in the uh, admin panel and down at the very bottom it says uh, record the meeting automatically to the local computer. So click on that and hit save. And then when you've created the presentation, what it does is you start screen sharing. So basically you click your screen share, you show people to do so, how to do stuff. And then what you do is down here, you've got this pause or stop um, recording. So you can pause your recording, stop your recording. It'll just automatically start recording. So uh, that's another great way to do that. Um, and then last but not least, what happens is when you do this, you've created yourself a video file. And it's typically going to come in a .mov or a .mp4. Um, and I'll get into that in a couple of slides here just to, uh, to help out. Um, so yeah, there you go. From a .move or a .mp4 creating those files. Now, what you want to do with this is you want to um, potentially be able to edit your video. So um, a lot of times I'll create videos where I've got to jump between different screens and stuff and I don't want people seeing me jumping through the screens. So what I will do is I'll record the video um, and then what I do is I bring it into, and I'm a Mac person um, and have been for years, I bring it into iMovie. Uh, so how I do this is I've got the import button here or if I've got a file folder open I can drag it in here. Uh, first things first though, you create, a, um, create a, uh, an event. So you go into the, um, in here, you can create event or you've got a menu up above, create the event down here. Make sure that you're clicked on the event title that you want, and then you can drag the movies in here or you can upload them here. And then what happens is um, this little gear window, what you click on, when you click on that, it will, um, it'll move it out and you'll be able to go from kind of like one minute durations to like five second, one second durations. And you can copy certain clips of your video. And then what you do is you drag them down into the window down here and you put kind of one after another, after another, after another. And that's how you can create a movie uh, in uh, iMovie. Now, uh, this is it's extremely high level. And by the way, what you do is then you go up here and you export it to a file or you can put it directly into um, systems like uh, YouTube or Vimeo. Uh, and different uh, different sites as well, Facebook as well. Um, you know, this is not a video on how to edit a video. If you want to find out more, I would just highly recommend just Google um, uh, using iMovie or if you're on a PC, how to edit a movie on a PC. Uh, you'll find lots of great information. Um, the reason why I do this sort of stuff or try to explain to people is I, I you know I've spent years, I've spent last eight nine years creating movies and, and videos. Like I say, I've got I think like sixteen hundred videos. Uh, between my two two channels and like 600 or so on Vimeo. Um, I want you to learn from my mistakes. I don't want you to stumble and fumble through all this stuff. It's easier if you just learn directly from my mistakes. So anyways, that's how you can edit your movie. Um, now, the other thing too is the size of your movie is, um, is important. .mov files are huge. Like I've got somewhere I record them in like two, three gigs, and that chews up your hard drive on your computer relatively quick if you're creating those ones. So what I'll do is I'll take one of those larger .move files, uh, and then what I do is I um, click here. This is a program called Handbrake. Sorry, I believe it's available for a PC. I know obviously it works for a Mac because I use it. Uh, click on Open Source. When you open this um, up, it'll bring up a... Um, you know, the, the uh, file, um, file folder where you can go through and find your um, video. 
And then what you do is with that, you put it, you find a destination. So you go down here and say, where do I want this video ultimately end? Browse, put it into whatever file folder you want. Um, it will go through and it shows you what you want. What you want is you want to pick the MP4 format down here, video, click constant quality. The rest of them, you know, keep your frame rate, um, you know, decent like this. Um, and then what you do is you just click start. It takes this video and it will put it into an MP4 format. So the MP4 format is a smaller video size. And this way it's not going to chew up your hard drive nearly as much as, um, it has in the past, um, or, or what a move, uh, dot move file would. So uh, I highly recommend you do that. The other reason you want to do this is because it's faster upload times to YouTube and uh, different video sharing sites as well. So here's just some tips and tricks, right? So one that I didn't put in here that I'm going to start with is, once again, I'm going to go back to get a good quality microphone that's going to pick up your um, voice decently. Uh, a lot of times internal microphones on... Uh, computers um, are horrific. They don't sound very good. So I would highly recommend I use the um, uh, Blue Yeti microphone. I also use the Blue Snowball microphone as well. If you're doing presentations, I also say talk slowly so that you can get your points across. If you have sections, you want to pause in between the sections. So for example, let's say you have a one hour long video or uh, presentation you're going to do and you have 10 different segments in this. Give a bit of a break in between each segment. The reason being is because if they're kind of equal lengths, you're going to have 10 six-minute videos that you can break out. So you can have the full video, which is great, but then you can also edit it down into kind of six different area or, or 10 different um, six-minute videos. And those can be used as part of your multi-purpose marketing as well. Um, you can take them and put them up on YouTube as kind of part one, part two, part three, so on and so forth. Uh, or if you have like a teachable course, which I'm going to teach you about that later on in this video presentation series as we go through this, um, you can use those as uh, course lectures as well. Um, the other thing too is I, I put in here Google how to screen cap. That's, if you don't know how to do screen cap, just Google how to screen cap. That's where you start. Like I say, I've got a ton of videos. Uh, some of the first things, I'll, I'll give you a really quick story. When I first started doing this, I went and bought a handy cam and a tripod uh, thinking that I would record my screen on my computer and it looked awful. So um, once again, I don't, I want you to learn from my mistakes. Don't go and spend 400 bucks on a handy cam and then realize that it looks horrific. Um, learn how to buy like a $20 piece of software to record your screen cap uh, or screen cap your, your computer. Uh, same thing, how to, how to edit, you know, just go to Google, Google will be your best friend on this stuff. That's how I learned how to do a lot of this stuff. Um, so what's next? The next presentation is where you can start posting your videos. So now we're getting into kind of where, how to get this marketing rolling and in multiple places. So over the kind of the next nine weeks, uh, I'm going to go through different places where you can start posting videos and putting your information up. And, uh, and how to get found. And once again, this is this whole multiplier effect. If I put a video up on uh, YouTube, and if I put a video up on Vimeo, if I put a video up on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you know, et cetera, uh, if I'm doing live events on Facebook, if I'm doing certain things, what happens is you have this whole multiplier effect. So you know, if you would only get 100 people looking at your video on one platform, but you hit 10 or 12 different platforms and get, get another 100 from each of those, you've got 1,200 people that see it instead of 100 people. So this is that whole multiplier effect. Hey, um, if you're a bookkeeper and accountant and you're watching this, if you want to get more tips and tricks, go to our um, uh, bookkeepingautomation.com uh, site, hit the vlog, and I'm posting stuff up here all the time. Uh, we've got a bunch of tips and tricks that we uh, that we put up there for bookkeepers and accountants. And one of the, and this is all marketing books, uh, tips and tricks from me, uh, because I know that uh, accountants and bookkeepers uh, have a tough time finding new clients and such. Uh, same thing. If you want to get bookkeeping or accounting marketing tips and tricks, um, I created a course of all these blog posts and a whole bunch more. It's about 20 hours of content in this site right now. It's a free course that you can enroll on. It's uh, it's on the platform called teachable.com, which I will teach in a future lesson here. Um, but I got all the videos up on here. So if you go to bit.ly forward slash BA underscore tips and the B and the A and the T have to be capitalized. 
uh, you can enroll in the course. So you just click on that little button there and you'll be able to enroll in the course. Here's another one. Um, you know, that one was for bookkeepers and accountants. This one's for everybody. Um, I have a 14 part LinkedIn course. It's called little known tips and tricks. Um, and what you do is go to bit.ly forward slash 28 and 14. And then what happens is it'll bring you through to this landing page where you can get instant access to this and it drips out over a, a 14 day period for you. Text LinkedIn 14 to 44222 in the US. It'll ask you for your um, email address. And then what you'll do is you'll end up getting signed up onto this list. In, the, in Canada, if you hit 1-855-969-5300, uh, same sort of thing. Text linked into that number there. This course is literally, it's a $200 value course that you can get uh, for free. So uh, special offer. This is for uh, bookkeepers accountants. Enter my invoice. Hey, look, by the time I was recording this, it's February 23rd. Uh, we're getting set to launch the second version of our software. And we're looking some, for some beta testers. Um, we'll be doing that for the first couple of weeks of March. So if you watch this prior to March 15th, um, we're looking for beta testers. After that, we'll go live. Um, but, uh, afterwards you can get a free trial. Just simply go to enter my invoice, uh, .com. on the main page. You're going to have a, uh, there's at the time when we were recording this, there's a button there that gives you a 30 day free trial, uh, of our software. So you can see how it works. Uh, the other thing too, is, uh, as I said, the next webinar is we're going to really start talking about how to multi-purpose your marketing, uh, and get it out to the world. That's going to be on Friday, March 2nd. Uh, at 8.30 Mountain Standard Time. Just show up to facebook.com, enter my invoice, and you'll see it there. Um, if you want to get, if you're watching this on my Facebook page, um, uh, like the page. If, uh, if you want to find out when, you, um, when I have certain marketing stuff coming out for bookkeepers, accountants, or just general people in, in, uh, in, uh, in the area, um, go to facebook.com forward slash enter my invoice, all one word, kind of enter my invoice and like our page and you'll be notified when events are going up and such. Um, I'm going to skip the Q&A. That was for the live session, the webinar that I did. Um, if you want to contact me, reach out to me, chris.hamilton at entermyinvoice.com or else uh, chris at salestipaday.com and feel free to call me at 403-630-1243. Thanks.